Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss human lactose metabolism and lactose intolerance. So first of all, what is lactose? This is the chemical structure of lactose. It is a disaccharide that's made up of two individual sugars. One of them is glucose that's shown up here, and then galactose is the sugar down here. And it has a glycosidic linkage, making it a disaccharide. Lactose is the primary sugar that's found in milk. Now, milk is obviously meant to feed infants of a particular species. This is why human infants breastfeed, because they're dependent completely on the mother. They can't go fetch food for themselves, so they need the milk, which has everything they need, metabolically speaking. Okay? And the lactose, as we mentioned, being a disaccharide of glucose and galactose, gives the infant some important precursors. So glucose obviously can be used by the cell for energy. That's the primary monosaccharide. But glucose itself can serve as a precursor to a variety of different things like N-acetylglucosamine um, and a bunch of other stuff, glucuronic acid, that can be used in biosynthesis. Now galactose is not as much used to fuel the cell, it's not as much used for energy, it can be. But galactose itself is also a biosynthetic precursor. And so there's a lot of different things that can be made from galactose that are important that we don't normally think about. So that's why this is the preferred mono, uh, excuse me, disaccharide lactose in milk, all right? Now, lactose in infants is going to be able to be metabolized by this enzyme, which is in the brush border of the small intestine. It's called lactase. Now, in some sources, you may see this written as beta-galactosidase. Lactase is a type of beta-galactosidase enzyme. So beta-galactosidase enzymes are uh, enzymes that target uh, usually disaccharides that have a galactose. So this oxygen right here that's coming up off of the position 1 on this galactose right here is actually in what we call the beta position because it's going up, which is the same direction as this CH2OH is going. That's a little bit of biochemistry right there, but it targets uh, disaccharides that have this galactose with a beta linkage to the other sugar. That's why it's called a beta-galactosidase. But the common name is, of course, lactase, and it converts lactose into glucose and galactose. Now, lactase levels are by far highest in infants, as we can see. Okay, they're the highest in infants, and as we age, the lactase levels are actually going to drop substantially, to the point that when some people become adults, uh, we consider them to be lactose intolerant. Some individuals, for genetic reasons, can retain their lactase expression and be able to metabolize lactose, but there's a really good percentage of adults, um, about 65% according to this source, that uh, do not have their lactase enzyme anymore. Therefore, they're not able to convert lactose into glucose and galactose, and so the lactose levels build up if they consume a product that actually has lactose. All right, so what we're going to look at now is the mechanism of lactose intolerance. So hopefully at this point we understand what lactase is. Now, let's look at what's called normal lactose assimilation. This is what we would see in infants, okay, and in adults who actually do still possess the lactase enzyme. So lactose, of course, would be metabolized by enzyme lactase, which is not shown here, but it's metabolized into glucose and galactose. Okay, now this occurs in the brush border of the small intestine. We're in the lumen right here, as you see. But both of these monosaccharides, glucose and galactose, would then be um, exported to the liver, where they would be metabolized further or distributed to the rest of the body. All right, that's normal lactose assimilation if you have the lactase enzyme. Now, if you have lactose intolerance, notice this reaction of lactose being uh, hydrolyzed to glucose and galactose does not occur. This is because in lactose intolerance, you do not have the enzyme lactase. And so what we are to imagine is the lactose levels build up. So let's suppose you go and you eat a cheese pizza, all right, or really could be any pizza as long as it has cheese, right? Um, cheese contains lactose because cheese is a milk product. And so presumably you'd be getting a lot of lactose, but if you don't have the lactase enzyme, the levels of lactose are going to accumulate in your intestines, and really it's going to be dose dependent, right? Because the more lactose you consume, the more lactose is going to build up in the lumen of the small intestine. Now, because the lactose is not metabolized by lactase, which they don't have, into glucose and galactose, the lactose stays there. And it really has two fates. One, the lactose can actually be picked up by intestinal bacteria. This is a bacterial cell. 
And some bacteria do possess a beta-galactosidase enzyme, very similar to lactase, okay? And they can hydrolyze lactose into glucose and galactose, but this is purely bacterial, and it's occurring inside the bacteria. But they don't just stop at glucose and galactose. These bacteria metabolize the lactose into other things, such as carbon dioxide, hydrogen gas, and there's some that can actually metabolize it into things like methane, okay? And those gases, some of them can actually be absorbed and they'll eventually go to the lung, but some of those gases remain in the intestine and that's one of the sources of flatulence. Now, the other fate of lactose is if you have enough of it, um, not all of it will be picked up by bacteria. Instead, some of the lactose will remain in the small intestine. Now, Normally, most things that go into the small intestine are metabolized and absorbed. So it, that keeps the solute concentration in the lumen of the small intestine pretty low. But if lactose starts to accumulate more and more and more and at a faster rate than the bacteria can pick up, then the lactose levels in the small intestine go up a lot, a lot. And so you have a high solute concentration in the lumen of the small intestine. And so if you have a high solute concentration, in other, in other words, a high lactose concentration in here, then you're gonna have a high osmolarity, and that's not good. So the compensatory reaction would be for water in the interstitial areas outside of the small intestine, water will rush into an osmos into the lumen of the small intestine in order to balance the osmolarity. And so when that happens, you end up with a lot of water in the small intestine. And not only can you have flatulence from these gases, but when you have the water come into the small intestine, that produces the watery stool, characteristic of diarrhea. And so that is the mechanism by how lactose, at least in excess, causes diarrhea. But we also see that through bacterial metabolism, it can also produce flatulence concurrently. Hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the function of lactase and how it actually metabolizes lactose and also what the mechanism of lactose intolerance is. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.